We're so glad to have this huge room for a big audience. So um, we're really glad you guys can make the rescheduled date for our co-op panel. Um, we're excited to have five um, former or current co-ops and even a, a VSB employee who did a, uh, a co-op. So we'll introduce them in just a minute. But um, they all have, I think, some really kind of enlightening, in interesting information to share with you about their co-op experience. So. Um, as many of you have probably heard, and I know we've spoken in classes about it before, but the co-op experience is a lot different from, um, from the internship experience here at Villanova. So I think um, we'll have a lot of information to share with you. But the first part of this uh, panel, we're going to go through pretty much the logistics and what the different programs are, and then we're going to hear from the panelists themselves um, about their experience, kind of advice, or things that they could share. And certainly ask us questions as we go along if they're not answering them for you. So. Um, first thing that we're going to go through is basically kind of the who, what, when, where, and why or how. Um, so as you can see here, the um, typical population of students that do a co-op are um, either second semester sophomores or juniors. Um, sometimes first semester seniors can do the, D the district attorney's office um, co-op, but for the most part it's usually juniors, I would say. Um, and just by a show of hands, who here are sophomores? Okay, so we've got one sophomore, juniors. Okay, freshmen. All right, so some early birds looking into it. Very cool. So um, what it is, you work full, full time for six months. Um, you earn six free elective credits for that co-op. So it is, again, a longer experience than what an internship would be. Um, but again, it being a six month full time opportunity, we do our best to, to really work with you to be able to take courses before your co-op and possibly during your co-op so you still stay on track to graduate within four years. Um, you can see it's located mostly in the Delaware Valley, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Um, and you can take it either during your fall term or your spring term. And obviously it being um, six months, it would be, if you did it in the fall, it would be from July to December. If you did it in the spring, it would be January until June. And all of the recruiting for those terms takes place the semester before. So right now we're in the midst of recruiting for fall of 2014. The next step, if any of you would be interested in pursuing a co-op, would be to meet with Beth Cahill, my colleague. Um, whether it's now, even as a freshman, and you're going to think about doing it your junior year, it's, it's worthwhile to look through um, and finding out basically how your, um, how your courses are going to work out with all of um, with the co-op and everything like that. So you would want to meet with her or, or stick around after this session and you can um, chat with her a little bit further. So here's some of the logistics of, um, of the co-op experience. So first thing is eligibility. Who can participate? Um, you have to have a 3.0 GPA um, and really pretty much any business major or minor and for the most part, most of the programs are looking for you to have completed competitive effectiveness or uh, financial management reporting. So typically you've done that by your sophomore year. Um, the 3 GPA is a little bit higher of a requirement than the 2-5 of our typical internship program, and that's because, um, as plenty of these folks will be able to share with you, the, the co-op is a little bit more of a robust experience, so we would expect that um, most people are meeting that requirement. There are academic course requirements, which are very similar to if you do an internship for academic credit, and that is you have learning objectives, a daily log, a final paper, and a student evaluation that's all submitted <coughs> after the six-month experience, um, which is graded satisfactory or unsatisfactory. Finally, uh, some of the kind of, I guess, behind the scenes type of um, information that you would need to know. Your semester tuition for either fall or spring term, if you were doing a, a co-op, um, would really take place um, during that semester. So what that means is if you were to do the fall co-op, your fall tuition would cover the six credits of the co-op and then any, some, any semester classes or summer classes after the co-op experience or preceding the experience. So it's all basically bundled into that full tuition. Um, you can take up to 18 credits and we kind of handle all the, um, all the pricing and all that sort of thing for you. A lot of students, and we'll, we'll talk about this in just a minute, in terms of how they handle their housing situation and everything like that, that's all still covered under your tuition as well. Um, you maintain your health and insurance status and all that sort of thing. Um, and again, we really try to work with you if you are interested in um, doing this program in addition to having an additional minor or studying abroad or anything like that. We want to see how that would work into your, um, your academic plan for the next few years. So. 
again, you're, you're in the right seats, I think, to at least kind of initially kind of investigate this program and find out more about it, and then the next step would be to meet with my colleague, Beth. So, hopefully I'm starting to sell you on these programs, but um, we'll get into just a few of the details of each of them. The first um, two programs are the Delaware County District Attorney's Office. It's a Forensic Accounting Economic Crimes Co-op. Um, it takes place in Media, Pennsylvania. Um, and Sam here on the on the end, she had uh, done the co-op. What was that? Did it the fall of fall of 2010? 2010. Okay, so she did it a few years ago. But essentially, the program is very similar in terms of um, the type of experience and everything like that. But she'll tell you more about that in just a minute. But I think the the biggest selling point that we like to tell our students about here is if you're interested in business law. Um, obviously forensic accounting, um, any of those types of careers, or even considering law school just in general, this is a really great opportunity for you. Um, it tends, it is the only co-op of its kind in the country, so this program um, is very, very different than probably any internship that you would find out there, um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. So Johnson & Johnson is our other corporate partner, and they host three different types of programs. The first is the Finance Accounting Co-op, who Nick Vedino here and Bill Merrick on the end here have both done um, the, the Finance and Accounting Co-op. Um, we'll find out from them a little bit more detail about it, but it's in some different locations. And I think the, the big thing to note about this is if you were involved in this program, it's used as a pipeline to their full-time leadership development program. Um, they're not really an internship company, so co-op really is the undergraduate type of experience that you would get in doing this um, program. The other two programs that we have are the J&J &J Brand Marketing Co-op and the J&J &J, um, Consumer Customer Development or Sales Co-op. So we'll, we'll speak about that in just a minute, but similarly, both of the Brand Marketing and the Sales Co-op lead into their full-time leadership development programs. A show of hands, is anybody interested in the DA's co-op here? Okay. And then how about um, finance accounting, J&J? &J? Three, okay. Are any of the marketing ones of interest to anybody? Marketing or sales? Not so much. Okay, fair enough. Um, good to know. Okay, so let's get to the fun stuff, which is the panelists. Um, I would like to introduce first Samantha Wheeler here on the end. She is from the Delaware County District Attorney's Office three years ago. Um, we've got uh, Bill Merrick here on the end, um, who did the Finance Accounting Co-op at J&J &J just last yeah, semester, last right? Semester. Um, <coughs> next we have Nick Bedino here, who's done the Finance Accounting last semester, mm -hmm. right? Um, Trina did brand marketing, and John Hartunian, who is currently at the Customer Sales Consumer Development um, one. And here's my, my other big pitch, which is even if you guys are only interested in a certain program here, if you have friends or roommates or anything like that that you think these programs sound pretty interesting, they should come and investigate them or talk to one of us about them. Um, keep your ears peeled, at least in terms of if you know of a roommate that might have a similar interest or anything like that, because I definitely think the marketing and the sales opportunities might be relevant to, to somebody out there at VSB. So, Let's get started. Um, what we're going to do is kind of run through a few different questions. I'm not going to ask all the panelists all the same questions because I don't think that would be the best use of all of our time. Um, but I do want to um, make sure that we cover a lot, not just what's the experience, but what was really enticing to these students about doing it, um, how they kind of managed all the logistics, that sort of stuff, and hopefully questions that you guys come up with as we're going through it. So interrupt at any time. But let's. Um, First, start out with Sam at the end, and maybe we'll probably just go down the whole line here. Why did you choose to participate in a co-op experience, um, and what made the DA's office co-op a really worthwhile one for you? Okay. Well, um, I actually saw some marketing type things for the DA's co-op when I was here as a candidate, and it's actually one of the reasons that I chose Villanova. I thought it was an awesome opportunity um, that. I mean, I'm the only person who graduated in class of 2012 in the whole nation that was able to do this co-op experience where I was in, actually in working with detectives on a daily basis for six months. Um, I started, I guess, looking into the program freshman year after I um, 
enrolled into the business school and uh, worked with uh, Beth's counterpart at that time uh, to kind of figure out my schedule and how I wanted to make sure because I also knew that I wanted to be an accounting major. So I wanted to get those 150 credits before I graduated. I wanted to do it in the four years. So um, I was able to do the co-op. I, I interned as well. Um, and I was able to graduate with 150 credits. So it was great to be able to see it from freshman year and work it through to graduation. Okay. Nice. Um, let's go Nick, Trina, and John. And then I'll ask you a different question. How's that work? Uh, so I didn't really know much about the co-op experience until J and J actually came into my FMR class last year, um, and the opportunity really seemed really amazing. I mean, to get a chance to work in J and J, which is one of the biggest, one of the most well-known companies in the world, really, it just really seemed like an unparalleled opportunity. So once I started looking into like the logistics of how I would fit in my schedule and classes all that stuff, you know, I, I really saw that it was feasible, and from that point on, I knew that I wanted to do it. Uh, talking to different people at J&J, &J, the program really seemed like what I wanted to do. I mean, these, I, the difference I saw between this and like an internship, in an internship, uh, they're just due to timing, you're not as much able to get into like the real work of the company. The co-op, since you're gonna be there for a while, they're gonna spend a lot of time training you and teaching you how to do like what they do on a daily basis and what like full-time employees do, so. Um, Trina again, so I, I did the brand management co-op with Johnson Johnson as well, it's a great company. Um, I came in freshman year kind of knowing that I would be interested in doing a co-op, but I was also really interested in studying abroad. So I was fortunate enough to work with the Clay Center from the bat and um, try to plan it out that way I could do both. So my first semester junior year I was abroad and interned at L'Oreal UK and then came back and um, was at Johnson & Johnson and it was a great experience to have. I wasn't actually off campus for a full year even though it sounds like it. Um, I got to live on campus which was a huge benefit um, but it was an awesome experience to be able to compare the two to one another and that internship was 10 weeks and having six, well I stayed for eight months but having that in the back of my pocket was awesome in terms of like being able to get the kind of experiences I didn't expect to have. Um, I think the biggest benefit was I had figured out what I had liked through my other internships, but what I also got to do is kind of explore the territories I wasn't probably going to be as good at or things that I wouldn't have done otherwise, and that really um, kind of diversified my skill set and made me much more valuable to um, employers, and I am working with them next year in their marketing leadership development program. I think um, I'll echo a lot of like what's already been said. I heard about this program early on freshman year. I walked into my advisor and I said, I want to do this, can we make it happen? Um, and fortunately, you know, we work with people that are more than willing to help you through that process. So I plan that out starting freshman year. Um, for me, I think the biggest uh, attraction point was kind of like what Trina was saying, that time period. Um, it's six months versus three uh, in a typical summer internship, which I mean, I just started, I'm working now with j, j in the sales program, but already I've seen, like, I have long-term projects that I'm gonna be working on and skill sets that I'm gonna be developing that I wouldn't be able to do in a three-month time period. So that was, I think, the biggest thing for me was to really have a six-month experience or an experience where you can get settled and actually, like, learn something new. Uh, that's what I'm taking out of it right now. Um, I wanna ask Bill, if you don't mind, can you talk a little bit about um, the types of projects that you're working on in the finance and accounting co-op. Okay, um, I was lucky enough to work on a lot of projects when I got there. I was put in a new role, new role and they didn't really exactly know how to outline it, so they kind of put me in a whole bunch of things. The type of projects that you'll work on with finance are Excel driven, and now you don't have to be an Excel whiz kid that can pull up these huge if statements that are three paragraphs long but you have to be able to work with data in an Excel uh, format and draw conclusions out of that in a you know, concise manner that people above you can actually read because your reports get read by directors and CFOs. I worked on a project that worked on historical spend for our OPEX line or income statement. Every weekly report I did went straight to our CFO for pharmaceuticals. So 
I had to make sure that it was done professionally and in a manner that could actually be transitioned over and continued past. So overall projects are to challenge you with your Excel and, and analytical skills of data, but you're not going to have to do these financial accounting uh, problems like you do in an FMR. You're going to have more applicable situations that you're going to have to dive into by yourself. Um, how about Samantha, if we could hear from you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the types of assignments that you worked on at the DA's office? Um, pretty much kind of the same thing. I'm sorry, Bill, the bill was saying. Um, it's very Excel driven. Uh, the way that we went into every project and every case that we worked on was uh, the Excel documents that we were working on were most likely going to be used in court. So they had, and they were passed out as exhibits um, to the jury. So it had to be something that someone who didn't know anything about business could look at and easily <coughs> understand how this embe embezzlement occurred or um, anything like that. So that's kind of, we, we definitely use Excel on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also did a lot of like real world, like we went on a lot of interviews and we got to go to the gun range at one point and went to a jail and so it was a very rounded experience. It's not like we were spending every day at, a, at our desks. So it was very, I felt like I learned a lot. It was a great learning experience to see what, you know, those detectives do on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and how about maybe from a high level view, how are you supporting the district attorney's office through the co-op program? Like essentially, what is your role doing? Okay, so um, most, well, all of the detectives that we worked with started out as police officers and then they moved into this um, higher role as a detective. Um, most of them don't necessarily, you know, they're not highly equipped in Excel or using um, like computer systems to make it easy for the jury to understand necessarily. So what we did was we supported them in a way where they gave us, you know, the source documentation, they gave us check copies and different things and we made it easy to read so that we could either go to them and say, hey, how's this look? And if they could understand what was going on in our Excel document, we knew that we were kind of doing it right. They knew from the back end what it should look like. They just didn't necessarily know how to put it into practice. So that's kind of what we were doing. They definitely really relied on us to make sure that the, the cases that they were building themselves, that they had great documentation to be able to show how that case happened. Cool. That's great. Um, how about Nick, from you? Can you give us kind of a high level picture view of what your co-op, you know, the finance accounting co-op is doing at J&J? &J? Yeah, so uh, the finance accounting co-op positions more or less look at different, like from what I saw at least, my position dealt with looking at one particular line on the P&L, which was the uh, marketing and advertising budgets and brand marketing expenses. So basically, I got to work with different brand teams and just help analyze their budgets, help them know how much they've spent on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, different things with that. Um, you'll get a lot of projects uh, regarding your di like different uh, part of the company you work with. Uh, each like finance team within J and J supports different operational teams. So some there's supply chain co-ops. They'll be working with uh, the supply chain teams, operations. I work with marketing. Um, so yeah, you'll be given projects that relate to the different groups that you work with. As Bill said, there it's a lot of Excel work, but at the same time, it's not like you'll just be sitting at your desk at your computer all day. You'll always have chances to go in meetings, participate in meetings. And that's one of the biggest things that I like. You're not looked as just a co-op. They really want to see you step outside of your role and really try and add value to the company, which I thought was pretty cool. Great. Um, Trina and John, if you guys can tell us um, what was maybe the best part of the co-op experience. You're currently going through it, so this might be a little bit challenging. But uh, maybe one of the most, the biggest challenges that you had there as well. Mm -hmm. So um, in all my other internships, it was very much like, this is your to-do list while you're here, get it done, and you just check in weekly and kind of go through that. But when I got to J&J, &J, I met with my brand manager and he 
basically said, like, take a couple of weeks, look at the company and tell me what you think. So the whole time it was me coming up with things. And at first it was a little scary because it's so ambiguous that you are, don't exactly know what to touch first. But it was so great to be able to kind of show off and come up with things that maybe they didn't think of before. Or it was a great way to kind of give my input and tell them that I could, I could see things that maybe they weren't seeing or identify different business problems and come up with different kinds of solutions and decide which would take priority. So that was the biggest challenge was trying to deal with ambiguity and take advantage of it. Um, but definitely the most rewarding in terms of I got, like my experience, I got to hit so many different things. I was doing digital. I got to um, redesign the Motrin.com website. Um, I got to help redesign a shelf planogram that made um, for the Digestive Health um, team. So it was just a lot of great different kinds of things to do there. I think the biggest benefit though was um, I just went through the job process and interviewing last semester and as all of my friends were going through it, a lot of the times they were going into interviews saying, oh God, I hope I get hired, like fingers crossed. But for me it was, I could go in and say, this is somewhere I could actually see myself or this is something that I actually like about the company. And that wasn't the kind of level that other people were at. So when I was saying yes to companies to go back, it was about what I wanted and actually like a realistic of, yeah, like I could really see myself here being happy because once you say yes, you're locked in for two to five years and that those are your prime years to, to really exceed, so. That's great. I think I would echo, it's funny Trina to say that, freedom and ambiguity are the biggest, they kind of go hand in hand, I think, uh, opportunity and challenge that I've faced even in the last, started a month ago. I'll give you an example just from last week, we had a meeting um, that I sat in on with the director of like my team um, who travels around the country and he came to our office and said these are the five things that j and is working on this year as a whole and one of them was forecasting sales so j and historically hasn't been great with like how much are we going to sell next month so we finished that meeting and my boss said to me okay um, I want you to come up with a model by the end of the week for how we can improve our forecasting and I was kind of like what do I do? <laughs> you want to tell me what to do? So I had to like start playing around and I had a ton of freedom, but again, I was like no real idea of what I was supposed to do. Um, but you ask questions and you start to talk to people. Um, it's really, I think the biggest change is it's on you as opposed to on like a professor or on a textbook to figure it out. So I had to be a little individual. Um, and then I came up with a model and I predicted sales for February, so we're gonna see how accurate I was again. <laughs> So but just, just to add to that, like the people at J and J are so useful and such valuable resources. Like I'm sure any of the other co-ops too. But if you just taught, like you learn how valuable people are as a resource, and it's before like I would be too shy to go up to someone and ask them a question. But it was it just became so natural to just go up to people next to you and just say, "Do you know what to do here?" A lot of times, like it's a very fast rotating company as well, so people do rely on each other, and that was kind of the, the most fun part about it was you really can depend on those people and you become close because of it. That's great mm -hmm. um, I'd like to hear this from any of the J&J co-ops, but we'll start with Bill. Um, can you describe maybe the culture and the lifestyle of J&J &J as an employer overall? Uh, yeah, some of their philosophies have been echoed by the mm -hmm. responses so far. Sure. One of the key things that we mentioned was how open people are. I was told very early in my co-op that setting up one-on-ones, which mean you're sitting down in an office with a person that you want to talk to, is very common. And at first I was like, well, that's a little awkward. Mm -hmm. It's a little weird to kind of go talk to someone about their career, their perspective on things, but that's something that their company is based on, is being open about everything that you do in your career. And that kind of leads into their next big tenet of expanding on yourself and making yourself a better person. They don't stay in one job for 10, 15 years. They promote rotations. So after 15 years, my senior manager um, had experience in three different <coughs> sectors of J&J, &J, working on pharmaceuticals, Tylenol, and then knee replacements. And then within that, he worked within financial reporting, which is uh, preparing the statements that we released to the public for stock evaluation. And then he also worked on sides of creating budgetary plans for you know, a drug named Remicade. So mm -hmm. 
people rotate a lot and they become better people and better professionals because they're working on different things. They're not becoming pigeonholed and they're expanding on their core competencies and they're becoming better and better and better. And so it's a culture of growth there rather than just a culture of I'm good at this and I'm gonna stay with it. Good, that's good to hear. I definitely agree. I think it's uh, open is a word I heard. Free flowing is another way I would describe it. People move around a lot within the company. Um, it's not uncommon to find people that have been working with this company for 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, a lot of the people I've met have been there since they graduated college and don't want to leave. Um, another thing that's kind of cool, at least within my team, um, they have this motto. What's the, the dress code motto? It's bring your best self, they call it. Um, so I wear a tie every day, and I'm the only one in the office that like wears a tie. People are much more laid back, I think, because they believe that like creating an environment where they can communicate with each other and that's a little more friendly, um, as opposed to like super strict and uptight, creates a better flow of conversation. And I've seen that already happening. So. Okay. Anything to add? Um, one of the things that my one of the so I got to work on a digestive health team. Um, adult pain and pediatrics pain when I was at McNeil, which is the health consumer healthcare section of J&J. And um, the digestive, it's funny how different each of the teams are. Like there's a lot of personality and a lot of spunk in, in the people that are there, which was really fun. Um, but one of the things that they did was like a, a boot camp once a week, like everyone would go down to the gym and like go work out together. And it's just like nice to have that because you get to know people on a different level than just um, in a professional like work environment. Um, so that was nice, that's how you build a lot of those relationships too. Um, and definitely the um, personal development, like within my um, first month they had sent me to a workshop um, for figuring out like what your goal should be by the end of, it was actually not for co-ops, it was for um, full-time employees, but it was pretty much like these are the goals you're going to have for your year and these are the metrics you're going to hit and going through that was a really really valuable process because I've been able to use that up till this day and like continue to grow and make sure that I'm working on those things um, so that was important yeah yeah just to add to that it's it's amazing like at J&J &J, everyone there like regardless of if you work with them on a daily basis is willing to help you like you can go up to anyone and they'll give you advice people are more than willing to meet with you and it's not just like people that are, you know, new to the company or early on in their careers. Managers will be more than happy to set up time with you. But it, it's really on you to really set up these meetings and reach out to different people. But it's a really great culture in that you can literally go up to anybody and just ask them about their career and people will be willing to give you advice. And it, you know, it, I think it's a really great culture. Cool. So we've heard all really great things about J&J, &J. certainly they're into growth, they're into personal development, they um, really seem to kind of give you ownership, it sounds like, of a lot of kind of really big projects that you're doing as a co-op. Um, so how about, to contrast that a little bit, Sam, what's the DA's office like in terms of kind of corporate culture there, or, um, you know, how would you describe it? Well, can you bring up some pictures? I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> This is a perk of working in a closed center. So um, you can't really necessarily see this, but um, so you're working in the, the DA's office, which is in a courthouse, like in the, the courthouse for Delaware County. Um, so office space is kind of limited uh, within the courthouse. So you're actually in like a basement type area. I know it's, it's very glamorous. <laughs> you can tell it's kind of QB, but it's like a half cube. I'm not sure if you guys have really been in areas with cubicles before, but um, they're half cubes. This is me here. This is the guy that co opted with me and the secretary for the, um, for the division. So um, within the criminal investigation division, we worked with the fraud and economics crime unit. So this was the unit's kind of office space. Um, there are probably, these are all the detectives. So they all had a cube in that office. Um, this is uh, I guess Chief, he's Chief now, Chief Ryan. Um, he's in charge of the whole um, criminal investigation division, so like homicide, um, special victims unit, everything like that. And they're all within the same area downstairs. So they're all um, doing that. Um, so I guess it's, it's a little bit different than uh, 
than uh, J and J. But as you can tell, we everyone's kind of dressed. The the detectives are dressed in suits. We were more of like a business casual going on. But um, they they prefer you to you know look professional in case you are going out and you you know doing interviews or <coughs> excuse me um, meeting with um, different people around Delaware County. Um, I also have a few other pictures. This is at the gun range as, I, as well. Um, but they took us to the gun range one day. They have to go every six months and re, the word is escaping me right now. But um, they have to re like, realign their guns to make sure that they're shooting correctly. Um, so we got to go and do that, which is an awesome time. Um, just a lot of like different experiences that you're never gonna really get anywhere else unless you decide that you wanna become or you want to go into law enforcement and become a police officer. So um, that's kind of that. Like I said, it's definitely very different than a J and J corporate setting. Um, but it was definitely the best six months of my bill of a career was spent in that little office right there. So <laughs> good to hear. Yeah. So environment is everything, but I think it's good for. Um, anyone who's considering this co-op really to think about and hear about the different types of environments because I think that helps you make a good decision when you're looking at careers in general or interviewing in general as Trina mentioned she feels like she had such a robust experience that when she's going into interviews now she's already been in a corporate setting that she knows was a good she knows was a really good fit for her so now when she interviews companies or they're interviewing her it's kind of like she's making sure it's the right fit for her not just diving at any opportunity that comes at her. Um, let's talk about pay. These are paid opportunities, right? So are you guys okay to, to at least illustrate what you may have made in that experience? Um, Nick, you wanna start? Yeah, sure. So uh, tip, uh, typically I think most positions for uh, juniors are $20 an hour. The uh, j, j pay scale is based on what year you are. I think mm -hmm. for seniors it might be like 21, but it's all right around $20 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, for overtime, time and time and a half, so thirty dollars an hour. But typically, they like to keep you at forty hours a week, so they don't want you working too much gotcha. overtime. Do you do much overtime? Um, yeah, I would put in, you know, maybe a couple extra hours a week. But I mean, it not really, it's yeah, not too much. Cool. You're basically going to be working eight hours a day. Cool. Is that about right for you guys? Yeah, just, okay. Cool. Um, and for the DA's co-op, it's a little bit less than that, usually around 12 to 15 an hour, I think, yeah. 12 an hour. Um, but regardless, you are definitely working full time, so they are paying you, which I think is definitely an advantage of doing this experience. Um, how about, let's talk a little bit about, you're still a college student, you, yes, you're working full time, you kind of get thrown into, you know, being a, a full time employee in these, in these places, but how... How's the college experience still go for you when you're here? Do you live on campus? Do you socialize? Um, how do you stay involved on campus? Anybody can really chime into that that question if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Um, I did the like I said the co-op my I guess fall semester of junior year. So I still lived in the apartments. I was actually an RA in the apartments. I um, and you were driving to I, yeah. Media, so I right? drove to media every day and. Um, like I said, I had a, another co-op that worked with me. He was a senior, so he was in his um, fall <coughs> or senior year. Uh, so we carpooled, you know, we went back and forth weekly, whatever. Um, but yeah, I still lived on campus. I still, you know, was able to participate in pretty much anything. I took two night classes during the co-op just because, I mean, I lived so close. We were done at like 4.30 and night classes started at 6. So um, it was a better choice for me to do the two night classes. So I took, I think, intermediate one, intermediate accounting and fed tax. Um, so that's kind of, I, I didn't really, I didn't feel like I was missing out at all. I was still living with my best friends in St. Clair. I got to have this opportunity, like awesome opportunity during the day when they were in class anyway. So it's not like I was really missing out on anything. And then I was still able to, you know, live with them and hang out in the dorms and everything. So you took two evening classes while you were doing the co-op, mm -hmm. and then when did you take, you took three other classes in the summer? I took two other classes two in the other summer, classes so I took the full 18 gotcha. that you can take. So I took then um, two distance learning classes in the summer before junior, my junior year started, so I took like op management and Perfect. accounting information systems, so I was a double major, accounting and management information systems. So I, I took those, so I had my full 18 credits for the semester, 
going for the 150 and then cool with the co-op okay so you still lived on campus anybody have a different scenario than that here how about uh, bill i lived at home okay. i was lucky enough to live 15 minutes away from my office which is where uh, i lived in fort washington fort but washington. my office was in Portia. okay um so the way i say connected through the, to like to villanova mm -hmm. was through my team uh, i'm on the rowing team so i would go to practice occasionally on the weekends and i'd also visit them for dinners and whatnot. Outside of my team, because I know most people aren't part of the team, I would occasionally come in for club meetings because club meetings are usually at 7, 30, 8 o'clock at night. I was still active with some clubs and it's still good to keep involved in uh, the club, especially at your junior and senior level because you're most likely getting to the level where you're on the exec board or you're maybe reaching a higher level on the, in the club. So that's how I did it. Um, I also visited a lot of friends and tried to stay a college student. So you very quickly forget that you are a college student and you start to think like a 25 year old who has a career. <laughs> so I think it's important to stay grounded during your co-op. Cool. Do something silly occasionally like a college kid. So. Cool, okay. Anybody else? Different yeah, there are just the, I lived on campus too, so that was really great. Um, the other benefit is you don't have homework. So after, <laughs> Six o'clock after five thirty, six o'clock, you're done, and your friends are studying, and you're not. Um, I only had to take one night class um, that semester that I did it, and then one summer class, distance learning, and it was really. I almost thought it was worse coming back to school the senior year and being a student again than working. I would much much rather be working. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, are there questions that we haven't addressed? I know we probably have about 15 minutes left, so we've kind of covered what the experience is, the pay, the type of environment these experiences provide, um, the living situation, um, the classes. Is everybody kind of clear on the classes? You can basically do the co-op, take one or two evening classes, and then you usually take summer, two classes either prior to your experience or after your experience, depending on which semester you would do it. Um, and certainly I think a lot of what we've heard here today is, is how robust the experience is. I think that is kind of clear as day. Um, but it, it's really nice to hear because I definitely think, and as a um, professional who's been managing this program for about three years now, I think one of the biggest things that I observe in our students who are sitting in your seats last semester and they come back is, is they don't realize how big of an experience it really is until they do it. Um, I think you guys all come back and it's like you're so much more better equipped for interviews, for full-time jobs, for sitting in a cubicle, you know, for eight or nine hours a day, for, you know, handling happy hours or whatever the different situations are that come up as a result of being in a professional environment for six months versus three months over the summer, which I think a lot of students often elect to do. So um, I always want to applaud our co-op students because I think it is such an awesome experience and a great opportunity that I think a lot of students don't take advantage of here. Um, and as you can see, as Sam said, it was one of the best experiences she had here at Villanova. She's saying it was the best semester because she wasn't doing work, you know, up until 11 o'clock at night. It's a really cool experience that I think is, is only for a certain type of student. I really do. And I think, you know, those of you that are here and are really considering it, certainly um, the program kind of speaks for itself. So um, I think one last question that I want to know is how has um, the co-op, if in any way, how has it shaped your future plans or, you know, interviews or job opportunities that might be, that might be pending? Um, has it really kind of helped you in any way, shape, or form kind of with your future plans? And we can just, why don't we start with you, Bill? Yeah. Um, it affected my future in the way that Finance majors usually go investment banking or corporate finance. I was leaning towards investment banking before I did it, but I ended up actually liking corporate finance. I like kind of that nurturing effect you have on products and pushing things into the future and, and seeing the whole part of the company. Uh, as for a career perspective, uh, I got the FLDP offer, which is their leadership development program. So it changes your whole perspective as well because you're going into interviews and it almost feels like you're asking the questions because you already have something that you really want in your back pocket. Um, and that's something that's really unique and I think I look forward to that senior year process of looking for a job because I think it will be a completely different than most people. Rather than just trying to find a job, I'm gonna try to find a job that I'd like and that I think will be more beneficial to my you know, professional development. 
do they um, give you a deadline on when you have to accept your full-time LDP program? It's the, so when you do your co-op, you're going mm -hmm. to be recommended or offered an FLPP position. That offer expires October of your senior year. Okay. So it really is kind of a hold for gotcha. you because they want you right. to do some other experiences and whatnot. And they understand that okay. you, know, you can't accept the job January of your junior mm -hmm. year. So. Gotcha. So you're still interviewing then fall. Yeah, your so I, I can interview and do gotcha. other internships. Good to know. Okay. For me, it's been more about skill set so far. Um, in three weeks on the job, I think I have acquired, and I don't want to sound like I'm bashing school, but I've definitely acquired more hands-on experiences and more like tangible skills than I have in two and a half years at school here, I feel like. Uh, just because that's how immersed you are in the program. So for me, I feel 100% more confident going into whatever interviews I decide to go into and saying, I have this, this, and this skill set because of this experience. So that's how it's really given me, a, I think, a boost into the future. Um, so different than the finance leadership development program, the marketing one is a lot smaller. There's only four to five spots um, for the country, but um, they do like recommend you and kind of put you ahead of the curve if you do really well during your co-op. So I did end up getting it, but I had to interview other places. But when I was, I had so much more confidence going into it because I kind of knew, like I had, I was still really close to a lot of the people at the company and they were kind of telling me, you know, you have it, you have it unofficially. And um, having that in your back pocket, it's like kind of nice to go into your interviews and not be afraid. And you do kind of take on the, not the more authoritative role, but you're more um, confident in asking questions and figuring out what's right for you. So that was definitely good to have. And just in terms of professional development, I think I've changed a lot because of that co-op. Like, I'm not afraid to talk in a room anymore. Like, there's just a lot of small things that you wouldn't appreciate before that um, you really do change and you become kind of a new person when you step out of it. So. Um, also huge resume build. Um, there's a lot of projects you'll be doing um, in six months time and that's it's just a lot easier to sit in an interview and have so much to talk about that like the time goes by so fast it's not overwhelming. Yeah like what other people say I mean just going into interviews after doing a co-op you will be so much more confident you'll be so much more comfortable because quite frankly you'll just have like such a wealth of experience to draw back on when they ask you different questions about what you've done and like the type of stuff that you'd be doing with whatever company you do your uh, co-op with I mean it's it's all real work and companies recognize that and they can see that you know you're doing you know really really good stuff um, other than that I mean you're just gonna d develop soft skills technical skills I mean it, it's really great the <coughs> amount of development you'll go through in just six months it's crazy so um, after I finished, well, before I actually did the co-op, I did a leadership um, experience with KPMG, and then I interned with them, and then I accepted a full-time offer with them. So I worked with, at KPMG for a year um, after doing the, the DA's office, and um, it's something a little different from J&J. &J. At the DA's office, you're really not on track to be offered a position. Um, like I said, they're all law enforcement officials, so unless that's kind of how you want to do it and go through the police academy and everything and try have that be your like, end goal to be a detective or to make your or work your way through the ranks. You um, can't really do that, but uh, just the experience itself and having uh, that on your resume, I can't tell you how many people just, when I've done interviews, that's all they want to talk about. Like they don't really, they're like, okay, well, oh, you did this DA's office thing, can you tell us about that? And then they, like, you talking about it just spurs more questions and more questions and more questions. And they just think that it's this great, which it is, it's this great opportunity that not very many, only Villanova students have. So um, it's kind of, it definitely, I think, helped me with my, my soft skills, but it, it definitely just helped me, I think, kind of find myself as a person, just working there and working with the mm -hmm. And I think two um, kind of additional notes I just wanted to make. The district attorney's office, as we mentioned, is the only one of its kind in the country, and they only recruit here at Villanova. 
the J and J co-ops. I'm sure you guys have probably worked with Penn State or Rutgers students, Drexel, Drexel Northeastern. Um, Northeastern. So some other some other co-op schools. I will say, in terms of competitiveness, these programs are competitive. I mean, we definitely have. I know, you know, our our numbers don't probably show it here right now, but. Um, J and J is not going to accept just anybody. I think you guys are definitely the cream of the crop, and that's why you know you were fortunate not fortunate enough to get an opportunity and to also interview for the the full time programs as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to note about the J and J full time programs, they are rotational, mm -hmm. correct? So once once you've been offered a finance, a sales, a marketing full-time leadership development program. It's a two-year program, and you go to what, three different? It's three eight-month rotations. So yeah. one is definitely in Arkansas, which okay. um, it, that's because Walmart is headquartered there, so it's a sales rotation. This is the marketing one. I'm pretty sure finance does, too. Right? We do two. Yeah. Okay. Two? Okay. So you do two rotations, and the, yeah. and the marketing one does three. So just something important to note, because I think um, – you know, as one of the things that, that you guys had mentioned about J&J, they're a company that's really big in develop, into developing their employees to be future leaders of the company. So that's why, you know, John mentioned, there's people that are working there for 25 years or so, um, and that's a result of them not staying in the same job for 25 years. That's a result of them rotating, maybe changing locations, changing divisions, you know, getting different roles and, and really growth opportunities, which I know is probably something that you learn about in Business 101, you know, about working for a big corporation versus, you know, owning your own company. What are the, the pros and cons of that? So, um, I, you know, I think we've kind of um, said probably all there, there needs to be said about these co-op programs because obviously everybody here has had a really positive experience um, and continues to do so if they're currently in it. Um, but I urge all of you to um, really kind of the next step is to check out our resume um, due dates, which are this Friday. Those of you that may be interested in applying or considering the co-op program for uh, this upcoming fall, the resume deadline is this Friday, the 14th. And you'll see the campus interviews are pretty much from um, February 24th to the 26th. Uh, you should receive your offers prior to or during spring break time. Um, so we'll be able to sit down with you then at that point and figure out what your schedule will actually look like, kind of prepare you for what, what's upcoming in the next, um, over the summer and all, all of your assignments and everything like that. So um, your next steps are really to, if you're interested in applying, to meet with Beth Cahill, my colleague who is right over here. She has her, um, if any of you have or haven't met with her yet, you can get on her calendar today before you leave. Um, to apply by the 14th, and again, the, the interviews will be probably in about two weeks, hoping that weather doesn't affect any of that, but for the most part, those dates are going to stand. So um, I think, you know, last but not least, I just want to thank all of our panelists for, for coming back and speaking with all of you. I think their, their knowledge is way better said and, and told than mine, so please stick around and talk to them if you um, have further questions or um, need further information from them. But thank you all for your time. really appreciate you guys being here. I just say for you younger guys, sorry, Cassandra. That's okay. Yep. Um, okay. For you younger guys, I know you're thinking like you heard junior year is kind of when I, you know, I'm doing a junior year thing most of us did, um, and it may seem like really far off. Like go in and meet with Beth or go in and meet with your advisors now because there are things that you can do or start to think about early that will make it, mm -hmm. uh, that will facilitate this process much, much easier, you know, make it a lot easier if you want to do it in the future. So yeah. it's good, good that you're here. That's a good point. Um, and I think that's about it. Any, any questions from you guys? Did we cover everything that you needed to know? Mm -hmm. All right, let's give them a round of applause.